these questions reflect some of the most common struggles we face as a society. So often, the first solutions we go to are quick fixes, like medications to go to sleep, coffee to wake up, beauty products to make our skin glow, or as a healthier route, we look to diet and exercise. While these things help, we often overlook the one thing that can help solve all these issues, cost nothing, and take the least amount of effort. Sleep. Hi, I'm Nicole David, and today we are diving into something I'm really excited about. I am so glad we're talking about sleep, because it's one of the things that's always in the background. But today, we're bringing it front and center. During my career as a squash player and pro athlete, there was a lot I learned about the benefits of sleep to keep me in shape, mentally and physically, and to make sure I deliver my best performance on court. But even now, I've transitioned to a non-athlete lifestyle of running my foundation and coaching the kids. I need even more energy to get through the day, and everything sleep-related still applies. I struggle with issues just like anyone else. With AIA Voices, we're answering the questions that bother you most. So I'm going to talk to a few experts to help me dig deeper and learn a bit more about sleep and why it's so important. Let's go. I decided to reach out to Olivia, Australia's leading sleep expert, author and coach. Hi Nicole, I am also so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So Olivia, for something we all spend approximately one third of our life doing, many people do not realise the importance of sleep or see it as a solution to their problems. Absolutely Nicole. Sleep takes up such a big part of our lives and there are a lot of things that we're doing or a lot of things in our society that are really making it hard for us to sleep. You know, the first one that I can think of is the preference for short-term solutions like sleeping pills rather than long-term solutions. Now, I think this is completely understandable because especially when you literally just cannot fall asleep in the evening, then you just want a short, sharp fix. However, if you do resort to benzodiazepines, the you know, pharmaceutical sleeping pill, this can have catastrophic effects on your sleep and your next day. Research shows that 80% of benzodiazepine users experience following day fatigue so much so that it has a clinical term which is the benzo hangover. I know that during COVID, the Google searches why we can't sleep increased by 200% in a one year period. Now, if that doesn't tell you people aren't looking for solutions, I don't know what does, but the thing is that they're not getting the right solutions. So it's obvious, there's a bigger story to dig into here from societal norms to a general lack of education. Now, I want to get into the real effects of sleep on our physical and mental health. I think another really important element in the science of sleep is understanding what happens to our body when we're actually sleep deprived. Physically, 70% of human growth hormone, the key catalyst for cellular repair and recovery, is produced in slow wave sleep. So if you're not sleeping enough, you don't have maximum production of this key hormone, which is exactly why you feel so fatigued the next day. Outside of that, cognitively, there's a neurotoxin called beta amyloid, which is usually detoxified in slow wave sleep. If this neurotoxin is not detoxified, it contributes to brain fog, memory loss, and long-term, even Alzheimer's disease. The third factor in lack of sleep is our emotions. There was a study that found that stress hormone cortisol increases by 37% after one night of lack of sleep. As a result, you will feel anxious, wired, unable to switch off. But what about the impact on our mental health? We all know sleep is physical, 
but I don't think mental wellness is an area most people think about. And I've got just the person for that. Joining us from Singapore, Asher Lo is the founder of a non-profit providing mental health treatment to youth and has an extensive background in social work for mental health. Asher, thanks for doing this. Hey Nicole, thanks for having me. So sleep and mental health really go hand in hand, you know, and more than what most people think. So the reality is that sleep issues affect between 50% to 80% of people receiving mental health treatment. You know, with some studies also showing that people with insomnia, you know, being at a high risk of developing like major depressive disorder and some other mental health issues as well. So we're still seeing the effects of COVID, you know, and, and globally anxiety, depression, you know, all these have increased by like 25%. And in Asia, right, to start off with my home, you know, one in seven Singaporeans will experience a mental health condition in their lifetime. And one in five youths struggle with a mental health issue. In fact, COVID has made this worse, you know, and, and recently we, we started to see that more than 50% of young people who, who responded to a government survey said that COVID made their mental health worse. In Malaysia, you know, Ministry of Health reports that one in three Malaysians age you know, 16 and above have a mental health condition. And in India, national agencies report 10% of their population suffering from one or more mental health problems. People take an average of six years to seek help for their mental health. And in Singapore, we did a few studies over the last few years and we found that between one third and two thirds of young people would choose not to seek help for their mental well-being because of, you know, so many reasons. You know, we have examples of stigma, especially for you know the younger ones right they they are worried about things that are out of their control things like costs having to have parental consent to seek help confidentiality issues sometimes even they don't trust counselors and therapists because of bad experiences or friends bad experiences poor mental health and bad sleep often come hand in hand right so if they are looking tired all the time, especially guys, right? You ask them like, hey, what's going on? You've been looking tired recently. And they say like, hey, I'm okay. I'm just tired. I think the question is, what's causing that tiredness? What's causing you to not sleep well? The other thing to look out for would be a decrease in performance at work or at school. I think that's so important because it has to do with that lack of sleep, but also has to do with thoughts running through their head, you know, the lack of motivation, you know, being able to get out of bed, and, and that performance, right, definitely gets affected. And the third thing to think about, right, the third easy thing to look out for would be if that person disappears, right? So social withdrawal, they stop hanging out with you guys, they stop, you know, they stop being interested in things or the activities that you used to enjoy, we call it anhedonia. You know, I know it's kind of easy to miss, to, to miss the signs, um, but, if you're actively looking out for them and you're working with someone, you're studying with someone or you're, you know, living with someone who's struggling, these signs could just really start a conversation that might end up getting them to the help that they need. So, all this great information brings us to a very important question. Why aren't people getting enough sleep when it clearly has benefits and plays such a critical role in our lives? Earlier, I got to speak with a leading psychotherapist, Kate Yan Yijia. She had some fascinating stuff to share. Hi, Nicole. Nice to meet you and thank you for having me here. I'm Kate and I'm a psychotherapist. I've been working with infants, children, adolescents and their caregivers for the last 13 years. People can suffer from sleeping problems where there are fundamental changes in relationships like losing or breaking up with a loved one, moving house, or even changing jobs. Sleep also has the opposite effect where a lack of it negatively impacts those around us, like parents with newborns. They get irritated, which may threaten their relationship and continue to affect the lives outside their homes like in companies. As a psychotherapist, one of my first questions is to ask about sleep when it comes to a child's development issues. 
Lack of sleep does not only have negative impacts on their physical growth, but also on social and emotional interactions. They will find it more difficult to achieve self-regulation, which is the capability to calm themselves down when they have negative emotions. We see shorter attention spans; their executive function may be deprived, and that makes children not being able to even finish their homework, and their impulse control function will be decreased. Imagining you are in a classroom and a child hears some funny noise, and they start to go to the window and cannot come back to the classroom, and that's an example of how impulse control function is deprived. So you can really imagine these changes can fundamentally become a burden for the children's studies and friendships. So we're expecting kids to go to school and be alert, get good grades, and perform at their best mentally and physically when their bodies were never fully rested. How do we make this better? Well, absolutely. It is critical for caregivers to understand the sleeping patterns of children. For example, most adolescents, well, I have two at my home, their late night sleeping cycle on average starts two hours later than adults. So naturally, they are likely to wake up later. Understanding the science could help families avoid conflicts. Instead of accusing teenagers for lacking self-discipline, we can allow them to sleep in during the weekend. I was reading a really fascinating neuroscience research published in 2013. You know, when we go through sleep deprivations, our brain function changes are almost equal to the effects of encountering anxiety. In China, there is an idiom to describe one's diligence called "fei qing wang shi," which means giving up sleep and forgetting to eat in order to achieve your goal. Now, I personally disagree with this term, and here's why: when you sleep, your brain will use this restful time to clear away useless memories. Such as we may randomly cross by a tree in the morning, in order to retain key information we've learned while being awake, it repairs and recovers vital brain functions, which all helps to fuel our development. In my eyes, a high achiever is always a wise sleeper. Here are a couple of tips on how to improve your sleeping habits. To make sure you and your family have a good night's sleep, try to find the right sleeping environment. This might mean finding the perfect room temperature, the right quality of bedding, and even defining bedtime rituals that encourage sleep. Something as simple as one more hour of sleep can make all the difference. Let's all take a deeper look at the importance of it and aim for a healthier future, not just for ourselves but for those around us. As part of AIA Voices, we're reaching out to you to help us tackle the issues you want to learn more about. So tell us, what can we answer for you next?